everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Rachel and this is Stitched Up so today's video is going to be my first foray into sewing active wear as you know many of you know that I am a avid runner and uh, yeah I've never actually really got into sewing my own active wear before because as I mentioned in my fabric haul video that finding good performance fabrics in the UK has always been an issue but no longer it seems because I picked up some fab lycra from fabworks a week or so ago and yeah i thought that well i chose a pattern um i've chosen the jali pika sports bra and top pattern i'll put a picture of that just up here and i thought you might be interested to see how it comes together this is my first attempt at this and thankfully it's gone really really well so i thought you might like to um sew along with me and uh yeah have a look at how it comes together if you're interested in sewing your own sportswear too and uh yeah i hope you enjoy this video and i will see you at the end so this is what we're going to be making the jelly pika um and i'm just going to be making the sports bra but this pattern comes with the option of making it into a combined sports bra with a vest over the top which i'm definitely going to do at some point but for today i just want to have a go at the sports bra because i've never made one before and i don't know what's wrong with my printer i've asked it to print out in color it's got you know plenty of ink in but it's not printing out very well at all but i will put a picture in from the website so you can see a, a better picture of what this like what this is like because clearly us humans are not normally yellow anyway um there are the line there are the line drawings there now the only thing is if you look at the line drawings you will see that the um top has got like a band around the bottom and it's gathered into it but on the front picture both those models don't have that hem band attached so i guess that's option. Well, of course it's optional. You can choose whether you want to add that or not. But basically, before we start, what I wanted to do was just have a um, go through the jelly patterns with you. I don't know if anybody has ever used a jelly pattern before, and um, they are a Canadian company. They do paper patterns, I believe, as well as PDF. But here in the UK, we can only get the PDF, um, I'm led to believe so far. And they're really good value, actually, um, because they come in 27 sizes, from sort of toddlers all the way up to adult women. Um, and yeah, if we have a look at the patterns, because they're Canadian, um, the instructions are in French and English. Whoops, excuse me there. So to start with, it tells you the usual information. The, the English is on the left-hand side, the French is on the right-hand side. So it gives you the information about test squares and printing out your pattern pages. Now, one thing I will say about a PDF pattern from Jali is that you don't need to cut off the border of your pattern pages when you are sticking them together, which is really, really useful. Um, I do have a guillotine, so it makes that process quite quickly, but these butt up together really simply, so they're quite easy to take together. I know a lot of people hate PDF patterns. I have to be in the mood for them, I'll be honest, but um, you know, when it's essential, like making a sports bar is, then, uh, then yeah, um, that's one little less thing um, that you have to do. Okay, so turning over, here are the, gives you the size guide here with measuring, etc, etc. Um, so it tells you that this is a comfy, airy, modest and stylish layered tank. You have the support of the sports bra underneath, but the modesty of a slowy, a slowy tank, I think they mean a flowy tank. The wide hem band keeps the top in place. Or B, the sports bra with side straps and concealed element in the front that is flattering and allows for different fabric weights and stretch to optimize support so yes it goes from the pattern and this is the same with all jelly patterns goes from age two right up to um adult women so the top um it's a bit on obviously uh, measuring yourself and what bit is what so obviously um for the measurements etc and um, it also gives you the yardage you need for each option as well. So this table here is obviously for children and we are um, interested in women here. So I've already chosen my size and the sizes you cannot see it very well here because it's not printed out very well, but these are all lettered. 
um, and I have chosen my full bust um, which is a 37 waist which isn't really important because I'm making the sports bra but mine is smaller than that anyway but that's irrelevant um, and hips as well again I've ignored that because I'm just making the sports bra and um, I don't know if you can see that but it is actually V letter V so I'm just going to cut out a straight V of the sports bra and again it tells you your yardage here dependent on the size you have chosen and notions as well you're going to need elastic for this as well but we'll come to that in a bit so turning it over oh we've done that page next bit obviously it gives you sample cutting layouts as well but obviously you can choose your own method dependent on what you are using um there's some more on that side as well and then these are the tables for the sports bra for the elastic so as i mentioned i have um, picked letter D which corresponds to my size and it's telling me I need elastic to go around the bottom of the sports bar here one of those and it needs to be 70.3 centimeters or 27 and three quarter inches I need elastic to go around that the strap there at the back again uh, which is 73 centimeters and then I only need one of those and then I need two of elastic for the armhole area there which is going to be 54.8 centimeters so I have cut all those out already which I'll show you in a second and then um, yeah next it tells you a bit about picking your sizing um, what you need of each pattern piece again English down the left French down the right and then we come on to the instructions which we will get to shortly so I have already printed out the PDF and stuck it together and cut out the main pieces so these are the two pieces of the um, the actual flowy tank bit and this is the hem band which is just under here so I'm going to just put those to one side for now because I'm not interested at this time in doing the tank. I'm just going to do the sports bra. So I have um, got the, this is the back of the bra, the front of the bra and then the strap here. Um, and basically what I've done is, as I showed you in a previous video, I have bought this absolutely amazing lycra from Fabworks. This is, I cannot tell you how amazing this lycra is. It's an organic Italian matte lycra, obviously four way stretch. It's eight pound a meter in Fabworks. They've got loads of different colors and they're really nice colors as well. Um, this is like a sort of grapey aubergine color. Um, I've also bought it in olive and obviously they do the usual black and um, blue, red, I think. Um, but they have really these really nice muted colours and what I like about it is, is, is it's a matte finish so you know how some lycras are really shiny um, and I just think for me personally I don't like shiny lycra because I just think it makes, makes me look bigger. I have um, already cut out my pattern pieces so I've cut it out in this gorgeous lycra and also I've used this stuff because you do need to line it. Um, this is like a, a stretch mesh lining. Um, I think it's called Power Net or Power Mesh, something like that. And I got this from one of my local fabric stores that they specialize in dancewear. So they sell a lot of this kind of stuff. You can use it to line swimwear, etc. It prolongs the life of your garment. Obviously in sportswear like sports bras, you need a lot of support to, especially I will for running, to hold everything nice and still or as still as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, again, you cut out um, the main fabric and the lining. Um, and then I've already cut out the elastic. So it says for the main neckline and the bottom band that you use two centimeter elastic, which this is. And for the armholes, you use six millimeter elastic. Now I haven't got any of that, so I've just cut this out again and I'm hoping that that will work okay. I'll make it work, it'll be fine. I did consider using clear elastic, but then I thought I actually am gonna need the strength and the support of a proper elastic um, so that it's really tight fitted. 
um, to make sure that obviously it stays in place. So I've cut out my pieces, my elastic pieces, and we're gonna get this baby sewn up. So, um, right, we're gonna get this sports bra sewn up now. And obviously I am not doing tank, the tank view A, I am gonna go straight to view B. However, it does give you a little tip about how to sew this together um, if you don't have a serger or an overlocker. I do have an overlocker, so I'm going to sew mine up on that. But um, the other thing you need to be aware of, obviously, is making sure that you choose the right thread and needle for this project. Now, I am just using standard polyester thread, but I am aware that there are things such as woolly nylon, which is supposed to be better for active wear. Um, obviously, this is, I'm very new to this, so I'm just gonna use my standard thread first and see how it goes. The beauty about sewing things like sports bras is it uses up very, very little fabric. So, um, you know, it's, this is something that I can make again when I've done a little bit more research. But um, yeah, so we're gonna ignore that page and we are gonna go straight to the bra assembly. So Jali instructions tend to be quite brief. Um, they do expect that you sort of generally know what you're doing. And um, so obviously it's telling me to pin the front to back at the side seam and stitch and repeat for the bra lining. So I'm going to put those together and then just run them through on my overlocker. So we'll do that first. I forgot to mention was the seam allowance. So the seam allowance on this is a quarter of an inch. I don't know if that's standard on active wear. It certainly was on the um, the leggings that I made uh, that are going to go with this. So I have overlocked those together. You can see the side seams there and you can see how the back is sort of smaller than the front. So um, I have done the same for the lining. Obviously I know that black overlock thread does not match on this new lining, but I am certainly not changing overlock thread every time I need to sew this up. It's gonna be the lining of a sports bra, so that's that. Um, I've used black and gray overlocker thread, um, just up there, you can see that. I'm not showing you the rest of my sewing room, it's an absolute disgrace at the minute. So next up we have to, obviously then it goes onto the tank bit, which we omit because we're not doing that. And then we come back to pin the strap to the front and stitch number 14. It's got these really nice diagrams actually to sort of show you what to do. Um, and then repeat for the lining. So that's essentially what we're doing. So if I get the um, bodice here, obviously this is inside out at the minute, but we are essentially going to this is the strap bit. We're essentially gonna pin that all the way around there and then stitch it together on the overlocker. So I'll pin it and now I'll show you how that looks. So that's all pinned together. One thing I didn't mention was you have, you should have transferred your notches from your pattern. Um, so you match those up first, which, um, and then you've got this curve to go around. So you just have to be obviously careful with that so that you don't get any little puckers and um, obviously making sure that it is right sides together so I've turned the main sports bra right sides out um, and then making sure that they are right sides together so I'm now going to overlock this edge um, obviously I've got pins in here be very very careful if you are overlocking um, with pins in so if you go over one of these pins with an overlocker blade you'll probably damage your machine and your blade and they are very expensive to re replace I'm told so you don't want to do that so let's get that stitched and then we'll show you what it looks like that is now overlocked and just to reiterate I went did this very very carefully um, literally a few stitches at a time because you're sewing on a curve and um, yeah, you want to make sure that you don't get any puckers in that as well. So when that's the right side. So yeah, that's how it looks from the front. Uh, just needs a little bit of a press there. Um, what I would say as well is this Lycra is so stable. It's fantastic to work with. Um, yeah, there's some that I've seen before that I've tried that are just like real flimsy and really difficult to, to, to sew and difficult to handle, but this is quite thick. Um, and you know it's it's great to work with so anyway i'm going to uh, repeat that for the lining and then we'll see where we go next so that is the lining done with the strap attached to the main bodice so next up it says turn the bra tank wrong 
wrong side out and pin the right side of the lining to the right side of the garment matching seams, centers and notches. So, um, and then we're gonna stitch at the neckline and armholes. So we are gonna do that now. Turn the bra wrong side out, which is like that. And then we pin to the right side of the lining. So the lining wants to go inside. I have pinned the outer sports bra with the lining all the way around the neckline and the armholes as well, uh, matching up the seams. So just flip it over. You can see the back as well. So yeah, we're now pinned up to there and we're gonna sew, we're gonna leave this bit open, but we're gonna sew all the way around those edges and round. Just open it out again. Put some of there. Yeah, we're going to sew around the neckline there and then those edges there, leaving that bit open and these bits open as well because we're going to need that. Yeah, 16 and 17 um, stitch at the neckline and armholes. So, yeah, we leave that little bit open and that little bit open so that we can turn it the right way round which is probably what we're going to be doing soon after this we then pin the elastics to the seam allowances on the lining side and stitch with a zigzag without stretching um 18 to 19 so so that's the quarter inch elastics so if you remember earlier the quarter inch elastics are the ones around the armholes, I believe. All oh, right, okay, yeah, so they're the ones around the neckline and the armholes. So, yeah, so they're the, um, the ones that I tied together in a little knot. So that's these ones here, which mine aren't quarter an inch, but we'll see how we get on. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, so I now have my lining and my main bodice overlocked together um, so right sides are now facing and the next thing we are going to do is we're going to attach the elastics so we're going to do the armhole ones and the neckline and just referring back to the instructions it says pin the elastics to the seam allowances lining side and stitch with a zigzag without stretching um, so that's yeah so it just shows you here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this elastic and pin it to the overlocked edge on the lining side as it suggests and then obviously going on to my sewing machine set up for zigzag which is that one there and I will probably set the length and the width right down Oops, not as small as that, probably about there. I think that's usually what I do, two and a half um, width by three length. And yeah, making sure that you have a stretch knit, stretch, stretch needle in your sewing machine, not a ballpoint. When you're sewing with four-way stretch lycras, you need a stretch needle um, rather than a ballpoint needle, which is generally for knits. Okay, so let me get those on and uh, we'll get these stitched on. Right, so the elastic is now on the armhole pieces and round the neckline. I've stitched that with a zigzag stitch. And uh, yeah, I've left obviously that bit open there and the bit open at the top. Now, what I have noticed is I have double checked my elastic sizes and as you can see, they are quite short. Um, even on this side, it definitely says on the instructions that you attach the elastic without stretching it. So what I've done is I, I mean, obviously the first one uh, I attached right to the top there. And then when I got around there, I found I was a bit short around the neckband. Um, as I say, I've double checked the measurements. I've double checked what I've cut and I have cut it right. So not sure why that is, but I've left the elastic a little bit short because that will make um, an allowance for the seam allowance and also so that the elastic 
when the straps are inserted in the back there isn't going to sort of overlap and be a bit bulky so hopefully that will work out okay so the next thing we do is we turn the right turn it the right side out and base the ends of the straps shut which it says 20 so that's the top bits there so we'll do that now Right, I've just been scratching my head a little bit at the next step, which says at the front seam inside the bra, 21, okay, bring the fabric and the lining allowances together, 22, which is that there, and baste with a zigzag. This will hold the lining in place. Now, initially, what I thought it meant was basting the lining and the outer bra together at the bottom, but that's not the case because that's what we do over here on step 25 so actually what when i've scratched my head and read it again and again and again what it actually means is this is the bra now right sides out with the tops of the strap straps basted together so what you do is it means this seam here inside so we lift up that bit there and what it wants us to do is stitch the seam allowance there and the seam allowance of the lining together. So I'm going to pin that together and then we're going to stitch that with a zigzag stitch. So I've stitched those seam allowances together. If I just show you inside there, you can see that that's now stitched together. I just went as far as I could from one end to the other. So that holds that in place nicely now and it means this isn't going to sort of bag up bag out a bit as um, as I'm wearing the bra hopefully so next we pin the straps to the bra back main fabric layer only matching the double notches and stitch what we need to do is bring bring this which is that's the armhole there right round and step stitch it to that notch there, like that. So it's going to be like that. Um, I'm just going to move that over a little bit because I've not got that central, but you get the idea. Leave the lining free, as it says, and then we're going to stitch that together with a zigzag stitch. Right, so the next bit is bring the back fabric and lining right sides together to sandwich the straps and stitch across the back 24 this will hide the seam allowance the top will look just as good inside out so that's this bit here so initially that sounds a little bit confusing and um, the back now looks like this obviously this is where I have stitched the straps right sides together just to the main fabric only and I've just trimmed down that little bit of excess that was there, that bit I'm not too worried about, um, just to reduce some bulk. So what we need to do now is we flip over just the lining. So that it hides the straps in between like that. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm just going to pin that just to hold that in place while I stitch it. I'll just put a couple of pins in there. And yeah, so now we have the straps sandwiched between the lining and the outer fabric. And the lining right side and the outer fabric right side are facing each other inside there. And then we're just going to stitch across there with a zigzag stitch at the top. Right, so that's now zigzagged across there. I've got the odd little skipped stitch there. Um, and then if we turn the lining back over itself, you can see the inside looks nice and neat now. And so does the outside. Woohoo! So next up is bring the main fabric and lining of the bra wrong sides together and pin matching the side seams and the centers and baste the bottom edge with a zigzag. So yeah, essentially we're just going to baste the bottom edge of the lining and the main fabric together and then just baste it together. 
So we'll do that now. Right, it's starting to look pretty good. So I have stitched the bottom together with a zigzag stitch there. And the next thing it's asking us to do is sew the band elastic ends together to form a loop, uh, which is there, look, and mark quarters and mark quarters of the bra opening then pin it to the wrong side of the bra edge zigzag stitch along the edge of the elastic zig on the elastic zag in the air what on earth does that mean okay let's just ignore that bit stretching the elastic as you sew to fit the opening Okay, I'm just gobsmacked by that. I don't know what that means. Okay, so right, I'm going to sew this together in a circle and quarter it, quarter the bra bottom, pin it all on and then um, stitch it together. Then we fold it to the wrong side and top stitch. Okay. Right, so I have quartered my bra and elastic and I have um, just pinned it in those four places around the bottom hem so i'm now going to take it to the sewing machine we're going to stitch this with a zigzag stitch and um yep yeah, get it finished right so i've decided to hem the bottom of the sports bra as you can see there with my cover stitch machine so i've been just done a little practice i've changed all the threads and um, tried to pick some threads that i've got that match as much as possible with my fabric so that's stitching up nice so I'm just going to continue sewing this um, and then it'll be done. I'm just stretching this slightly as I sew because um, the elastic on the hem band was stretched slightly if you remember and I don't want to get any puckers in this at this stage. So with a cover stitch, when you're finishing off, your starting threads here, you need to cut off totally. And the same with the one underneath, like that. And then you go over just a couple of stitches over the same line of stitching, like so. And then turn the handle so the needles are out, lift the foot plate, and then using some tweezers, you tilt the front foot forward use your tweezers to get round your two threads pull them through snip them and then you pull the garment back like so and then snip your threads again just move that out of the way so then what you're left with is this yeah that's not the greatest finish is it but you know it's going to be on the back um, and then what that does is that takes the threads through to the underside of the garment. So then what you can do is you can just tie a knot in those threads just to tie it off so the stitching doesn't come undone. And then trim. And there, there you have it. It's done with a lovely cover stitched hem that's a little bit wavy but hey ho it's only a sports bra it should be fine so i am now going to try this on and see how it's in my downstairs toilet to show you the fit of this little sports bra now um yeah i mean it fits pretty well i'm a little bit if i'm if i'm honest i'm a little bit annoyed that the um the lining i don't know if you can see the lining is just flipping out a little bit um you see my cat in the background there look um and uh but you know the fit's pretty good i'm quite happy with it probably sense a little bit of a butt in my voice um i'll be perfectly honest this is not going to be tight enough for me to go running in um as it is i usually when i buy a high impact sports bra to go running in i buy one that is a cup size smaller so that it absolutely holds you rigid um, and I've made this to fit me at the size I am now which fits great I mean it feels incredibly comfortable I don't know if you can see that um, incredibly comfortable and um, you know while that's fantastic I don't think 
I've got much enough support to go running in this. However, I definitely would wear it for other sports and even hiking. Um, it would be nice for hiking. I think um, I'm definitely going to make it again. I think for running, I would probably make it a size smaller so that it was a much tighter on me um, because it's just a little bit too it's 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 fitted but it's not tight enough i can tell it's just not tight enough for me to run in um so i think i would probably make it a size smaller i also think i would get some um black power mesh so that i could line it in black because obviously you can see the lining is peeping out a little bit which is a little bit annoying and i definitely wear this for hiking in and um, you've got a lot of coverage here as well which is nice i mean i'm not i don't have a huge bust um but you know if you are full of busted you've got lots of coverage here so it'd be nice for wearing with um you know if you want to go hiking or whatever and i'll probably wear this for hiking um, because it's very comfortable it's more comfortable than wearing a normal bra so all in all definite win um and uh yeah i hope you found that um useful to see how it comes together um i like the fact that obviously with the separate neckline piece you can do contrasting fabrics if you wanted but as this was my first attempt at doing this pattern i thought i would just do it on the same fabric and this fabric is amazing absolutely great and i'm loving how the cover stitch hem looks i don't know if you can see that very well you really can't see that very well can you but it feels great on and um yeah for a first attempt definite thumbs right. up right i think i've dealt with the flipping out of the lining issue because i have a cover stitch and yeah it suddenly came to me like a bit of a light bulb moment that i could just cover stitch all the way around the neckline all the way around the armholes and uh yeah that has solved that issue so now i have no peeping out why not? it feels actually it feels better with having that cover stitched as well so um yeah super super happy with it now much much better so I hope you enjoyed having a look at the Pika sports bra. I'm really pleased with how it's come out and I hope you do, um, do like the finished result. Please let me know in the comments below if you've got any tips for me at all. Um, if you have had a go yourself at sewing your own active wear and if you can re recommend any sports bras to me um, that I could have a go at. I really, really love this pattern. I think I do need to tweak it. Um, for running, I think it's just not it's too big although obviously from the pictures it, it fits me really well but from a, an, an impact perspective I need something much tighter so um, I do think I'm gonna have to tinker with the pattern a little bit but I'm really pleased with how it came together and I'm really pleased with the performance of the fabric that I chose so yeah please leave me your comments below I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll be back with you really soon take care guys bye